Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. This video is going to look at a way to uh, get around a SolidWorks limitation where the scale function is not open to global variables or anything else really. Um, I believe it's open to table pattern or something like this, but um, you have to go back into the table each time to get it to regenerate. So this was an issue that cropped up with me with a, with a product uh, I was modelling for a client a piece of sporting gear which had a prominent aero section on each side of the, the product and I was provided with the section and the section basically needed to uh, change in chord length and and then scale equally as the chord length reduced. So I've got a quick mock up here of my end result this is not the product this is just something similar the product i worked on actually had an s-bend um, control the splines as well but for the purpose of this exercise i've figured out a way to scale sections that are imported without having to uh, constrain a sketch with equations or anything like that to get it to scale so i'm just going to explain the theory here so that's the end result i have a tool surface which i've created and basically across this tool surface I uh, intersect a curve through at an appropriate point to match the depth of the section that's needed based on my control geometry. Uh, so you can see one, two, three sections here. So those are the three sections that end up building up the wing here. So then I take a section there and make a planar surface and then that planar surface using the uh, coincident um, constraint within the move body copy tool I move that to a point in space and then I've created a loft through those three profiles and I've got some checks as well to make sure that dimensionally this is scaling correctly and equally okay I'm just going to roll back like I normally do and just explain a few things so I have imported this section here so this is a NACA or NACA NACA 4415 uh, section so I've uh, imported the points into Rhino and then I've made that into a polyline and made a surface and I've imported the surface so I scaled it to be nominally 200 millimeters long in Rhino so this is all just the length there's there's nothing specific here it's just an example okay and then what I've done because I don't want my tool setup to be in the middle of the workspace I've got to move copy to move that forward out of the way and then I've retraced that section because we don't want to use the polyline section so if I go into that sketch and have a look so I have created two degree five style splines one for the top and one for the bottom and on the leading edge they're meeting at the vertical as you can see so it's close-ish uh, you could probably get it a bit closer, but also keeping curvature and the fairness of those splines in mind. So we have a look at the curvature cone. Okay, a little bit of a kick in the back there, but... So yeah, retrace the section. There's the chord line based on the polyline. So this is meeting the, poly the polyline section right at the very front and right at the very back. Okay and this point here is quite important because this is where we're assembling or moving the sections around okay next up as i made a, a surface plane using the retrace section so just hide the hide the imported one okay so this is the solidworks one next up some control geometry so i've created a sketch what i want in plan view and if we look there, there's the, the wing root dimension. I've got a leading edge controlled with an angle, trailing edge controlled with an angle. I've got like the wing length normal to the airflow. And because I want to have a section in the middle as well here, I've created a couple of equal length construction lines to control where this section sits. And I need these dimensions here, so I've got these reference dimensions. Those dimensions will be used to derive the scaled uh, sections okay so just another thing i'm not by any means an aeronautical designer i'm an industrial designer so 
Uh, this was a product I had to model, as I said, sporting gear, but it did touch on this. And, and I did have, a, have trouble, and I have read of other people having trouble uh, scaling sections within SolidWorks since doing this job. Okay, so we've got the plane control. Next up, we've got a plane that's going through the leading edge. And then I've got the leading edge control. So what the leading edge is going to look like from a front elevation. So dimension and angle. Okay, next up we've got the scale tool set up. So to use the scale tool, we need to define a coordinate system. So I want to scale this here. This The scale size, basically I need the tool, uh, that tool that I showed you before that we're driving our sections from, it needs to be larger at its largest at the root, uh, longer than the wing's root dimension, and the tip needs to be smaller than the tip of the uh, wing. Okay, so coordinate system. So this coordinate system is clipped on to that point I was talking about before, the front of the wing. Then I've got a scale feature, and this scale is just a nominal uh, amount, as again, as I said, just to be larger than the control geometry. So I've gone for two here and scale about the coordinate system. There's my coordinate system. Okay. So that length there is bigger than this length here. Next up, I got some check dimensions because uh, when I derive these sections, I want to check like the ratio of this height here to the length. So the check dimension is, that's from the leading edge to the trailing edge. I've got a line, and then I've got another line that is midpoint along the cord, which is perpendicular to the cord, and then it's touching top and bottom. Okay, so I've got these dimensions here, and from those I've uh, divided each by each other, and I've got a, a ratio. Next up, I'm going to make a copy of that. And again, it's moved out a nominal amount, so 200 millimeters. I did have it at 100 millimeters here, but it was getting a bit skinny when I was trying to intersect uh, my sections, so I moved out 200 millimeters. Shouldn't affect the accuracy though. And then on that, on that planar surface that I've just copied and moved out, I have drawn the cord line with the midpoint, and. The reason I've done this is because I need to scale this now, but I'm going to scale it around the centeroid, okay? So, or a point, another coordinate system. So, to know where that is, I've added a point, which is midway along the cord line, or the cord, and then create another coordinate system. So, coordinate system, I've just picked that point. I haven't changed the axes using planes or anything like that. That is default. Okay, and now I'm going to do a scale around that. So the scale again, a nominal amount, but it has to be smaller than, than the wingtip. Okay, and next up is we just create a surface loft, which is just a straight surface loft between those two surface bodies. And because there's only a, a break in the planar surfaces at the front and back, there's no real um, hassle with the connector here. Okay. So that's our tool. So next up is we've got to calculate the sections. So at the wing uh, root, what I've done to calculate this section here is in the top view, on the, on the top plane actually, I have drawn a line from the trailing edge to the uh, leading edge, and that is normal to the airflow direction, so vertical. and um, and then that dimension is linked to this dimension here, which is the uh, root dimension for the wing. Okay, so if you change this dimension here, this will just slide up and down our tool. Okay, next up, create a plane normal to the top surface, or sorry, normal to the top plane through that line we just created. And then I'm going to create a, a sketch on plane that two there, and that sketch 
we're going to create intersection so if you pick that surface and you go push s for your shortcuts and you go here and you go intersection curve so i've done that for the top and bottom okay and then i've added this check geometry um, which was the same as what i explained over here so there's the chord line this line here which is perpendicular to the chord and it is on the midpoint and then i've grabbed some dimensions okay So using the dimensions over here, the ratios I came up with, if we multiply that 250 by 0.1326, which is the ratio I grabbed off the, the root of the, the tool body, that equals 33.15. So we're 33.26, so we're a little bit off there, but still in the ballpark. Okay, and then... I've created a surface plane using that sketch and next up is to position this over here so we've, we've scaled this our master profile and now it's going to go over here we're going to assemble it so if you haven't done this before you can assemble or move bodies with move copies so what you have to do if we delete this normally if you go and and, and move copy it starts on this dialog box where you pick a body so you pick that body there and then down here you can go constraints um, so you can go coincident but you have to pick a point that's on the actual body so if I went here and picked here that might be the sketch point but so we hide our sketches we'll pick that point which is our leading edge and then we're going to go over here and we're going to pick this point here because that's the leading edge okay so i'm just gonna go cancel just in case there's something that falls over it's the same thing though okay next thing i've done is i've created a sketch uh on this using the surface body here well it's on the center line so i could use that plane but basically what the sketch here does is it draws a line up from my construction geometry up to the trailing edge of that profile and I have a vertical constraint added there so if this wasn't vertical because this was too long or too short so the scale was wrong then I wouldn't be able to go and add a vertical constraint there and also if we measure these two and go measure it says they're perpendicular so they're not 99 point or 90.1 or something like that so that looks all good to me next one up we're going to do the mid wing section so Same thing on the top plane, going to add a sketch. And the sketch is coincident to the leading edges of the tool body. Vertical again. And then this time we have uh, linked this dimension here to the dimension here on our control geometry. Which is this one. Which is driven. Okay. And then again, going to create a plane on... Um, through that line that's perpendicular or normal to the top plane and then on that sketch we're going to intersect with these surfaces and then again I've got my check dimensions in there so this time I've got 166 1219 times 22.02 .02. okay so fairly close a little bit of deviation uh, and then we create the surface plane again and then again I have to create a plane over here to uh, for this to assemble onto I need to create a point an intersection point so create a plane here which is normal to the top plane through our control midpoint section where we want it to go and then i've created a sketch uh, which is just a pierce point relationship with that leading edge okay and then move copy again same as before and then i've got a check sketch here again to make sure that this is vertical and those points are you know so we're the same length and finally we've got the wing tip so So again, 
top plane, uh, line, vertical, coincident to the leading and trailing edge, and then that dimension is from our control geometry up here, which is again another resultant um, or driven dimension. Okay, and that's built the same way again and assembled, and I have that check sketch, and we have the check sketch there. Okay, next step is to build the airfoil surface. So this is just like the same way as I built the tool body there. So we've got the one, two, three profiles. So I've picked those and made sure the connectors on the front. Okay, and that's the result. We can do is let's just check if you pick an edge like this and do a deviation analysis. Should be zero degrees all along there, which looks good. And trailing edge deviation analysis and those are all the same so that's good so that sort of gives you some reassurance that the sections um the same along there it's just being scaled so as i said there's no with the with the solidworks scale tool and, and i believe this is still the case with the latest 2025 you can't double click the scale you can't right click and have any way to um you can't go in here and push equals you know to bring up any of your global variables so it's pretty hard to link the any imported geometry um so when your wing or your section changes that it will update so now i've done that i can actually update this so let's have a look go to instant 3d if this falls over you might have to do a control q if anything falls over so as you saw there, that was scaling um, and updating in real time. Some of these dimensions are a bit sensitive, right? So, and control Q, so that's updated. See, this is sort of fallen over, you have to go control Q. So let's see if we can change the dihedral angle. Um. okay so it seems to be pretty robust as far as it's scaling everything um i have done dimensional checks and it does look okay uh, it's, i mean it's not 100 percent perfect as you saw there was a little bit of variation that product i was working on i'd change the plan view um make this a bit smaller through here or something and then I had to go and manually re recalculate the scale for each of the profiles, which was a bit of a pain, especially in a dynamic sort of project, you know, when the client's asking for changes. So I think that's better. I'm going to put this model in the description. So have a look. No doubt there's people with much more aero experience than me. Let us know if there's better ways to do this. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's other places we're using something like this might help get around the... Uh, the limitation of the scale feature in SOLIDWORKS. So thanks for watching, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.